pH meters seem like they're a really obvious and intuitive piece of equipment to use, which makes them ripe for misuse. And I almost always see people misuse them. So I really want us to make sure we know how to correctly use a pH meter and especially its pH probe because we're actually doing a sensitive electrochemical measurement that's very easy to, dis to disrupt. So the first thing you should do when you get out a pH meter, you should have to remove it from its storage buffer. If it wasn't in a storage buffer, the tip is dried out. And if you remember in the video where we talk about the junction potential on the glass surface, and we talk about what's actually happening inside the glass, it has a hydrated gel layer. And if that layer has become dehydrated, we're going to have a whole lot of crud become part of that membrane, plus it's just turned into a dry network instead of a wet one. You might be able to restore it by rehydrating it. You might be able to do a couple of other things that can get it back to working order, but there's also a pretty decent job and a chance that that thing just became junk. So, hint, make sure you put it back in the storage buffer when you're ready to put it away. If you find that it isn't in the, inside of the storage buffer, make sure you talk to whoever's in charge of the lab so that we can talk you through trying to fix that. Or if you're working in uh, a position later on, you want to look up ways to try to restore an electrode or you'll have to buy a new one. Now the next thing you need to do is open the air vent and this is one that I constantly see people forget to do. That's the plug at the very top of it. So on your probe, you've got your wire up here. It's usually a little plug right there or there's that little collar that you rotate. Make sure the collar is now open. It should have been closed before but it should be open when you're ready for your measurements to start. You want to make sure your electrolyte levels are also fine at this point. Remember that it showed you in the sketch before that you've got two electrodes in there. The levels may not be the same. You may have the inside layer be deeper down than the outside layer. But the key thing is they do have to be full enough. And usually, if you need to put more electrolyte in, you just put it in through that same hole as the plug. Now the next thing you want to do is you always want to keep the tip sitting at or below the surface of water. You don't ever want to let this thing get dry. Because if it gets dry, that layer is going to collapse like I mentioned up there. We're going to have a problem. You can have it out for a few seconds, but if you're waiting more than 10 or 15 seconds to get a measurement done, put it in something. Even if it's just DI water, put it inside of something. You don't want it to get dry. Now, right before you're going to do your measurement, rinse the bulb. Make sure you rinse the shield around it too because you're going to have little droplets kind of sticking on the inside right there and there. You don't really want to be carrying this outside buffer solution into your analyte or transferring analyte from one place to another. Now, you don't want to wipe it. If you do want to wipe it, don't. Because on a nice dry day, when you scuff your feet across the carpet, you pick up a big static charge, enough to zap your younger sibling. Not that I ever did that. But what are you trying to measure here? You're trying to measure tiny little charge differences across this glass membrane so that you can see what kind of a junction potential it has. Well, if you're transferring a charge onto that surface by wiping it, you're probably going to create some big bias in your measurements. So, don't wipe it. Now, the other thing you'll do in the sequence is you're going to calibrate it with some reference buffers. Now, if you're going to be working at, let's say, pH of 6, you want to calibrate it with a pH 4 and a pH 7. You can see that that's because your target should be right along the line between those two. What you're going to be doing is calibrating your pH so that your nominal, in other words, your label pH is 4, and your measured pH is 4. Up here at 7, your bottle's pH says 7. You dialed it in to say 7 on your pH meter as well. So you should get a good accurate measurement for your pH 6 solution too. A two-point calibration is usually good enough as long as you're going to be between the two points in your range and they're not too far apart. You don't want to calibrate with a pH 1 and a pH 14 solution because that's going to have more potential for error between them. But something like this, where you have a 4 and a 7, and you're trying to measure something between them, that's usually good enough. If you're expecting a big pH range, most modern pH meters will let you have typically 4 or 5, maybe even 7 different 
calibration buffers all already tested out before you start your assay. That way you can make sure that you're getting realistic pH measurements. So the more the better, but two of them are often good enough. And if you're going to be working very close to it, suppose that your solution is going to be a series of buffers that you've made for phosphate that are around pH of 7. You're working from like 6.8 up to 7.2, and you don't care about a tiny amount of deviation. You could even live with a one-point calibration at that point but the more the better. So you've gone through all of your experiment, you've logged all of your data, you're cleaning up for the day. Make sure you put your tip back into that vial of pink buffer solution. Make sure you close your air vent so that all of that electrolyte isn't leaking out. Now go ahead and put the thing away. Of course, wipe it down if there's any splatter on it, you know, all the good stuff. So clean it, sort and buffer, close the air vent. That's the basic way that you use a pH meter and probe correctly.